Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the High Vibration Living Podcast. I'm your host, Chef Whitney Aronoff, and today I have the pleasure of chatting with Amanda Dawn Vollmer. Amanda is a professional, eclectic, holistic health practitioner, helping people to prevent disease and heal naturally. She designs and produces handcrafted and all-natural body care remedies available in her online stores, Yum Naturals and DMSO. She is the published author of Healing with DMSO, a science-backed guide that helps readers understand how DMSO works, why it works, and the many ways you can harness its power to heal aches, pains, and other ailments. Amanda has been helping people to prevent disease and heal naturally for over 15 years. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, what is an eclectic holistic health practitioner? Yeah, great question, Whitney. Um, The main, why I decided that term over holistic was uh, a few things, but mainly it, it it's a pulling together of multiple um, disciplines, health disciplines, and pooling what works over a period of time. And so if I wanted to draw on Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic medicine, um, or, or just my experience of using a specific orthomolecular approach to healing, whatnot. So it it doesn't uh, tunnel me into just say naturopathy uh, or, or homeopathy, that sort of thing. So eclectic just really means to, you're pulling all the things together that you know are effective and are teaching that. I like it. Well, can you tell us a little bit more about your background and the different places that you've been drawn to study and to bring into your practice? Yes. uh, Well, you know, it's really a healing arts, which means they're each practitioner brings their unique qualities into the scenario. Uh, uh, it's a long history, so I'm not, I'm not going to go through everything. I mean, I was trained traditionally. Um, my alma mater it was science-backed, science degree, because you couldn't really uh, go into med school without having you know, your undergrad done. Um, I was actually interested in vet medicine, animal medicine first. That was what drew me into the medicinal arts uh, at all. And they weren't really receptive to a holistic practi- practitioner idea um, in, in, in my interview. And I had to switch my focus to um, human medicine. I was very fascinated by frequency healing. That was really the first, my first love or my first draw to medicine was the what was so fascinating that you could heal with your laying on of hands or or praying, or um, uh, frequency of color. Um, I was very interested in um, radionics and uh, some of the tech that's been made, like frequency tech, um, because I really was very thoughtful. Like I could have gone into to be a surgeon because I really liked the mechanical aspects of it. I was very interested in the hands-on healing part, like massage therapy and acupuncture, um, chiropractic manipulation. I really excelled at those areas and the releases that people would have, you know, emotionally as well. And that connection between the body, mind and spirit um, when it comes to healing. Uh, I was really first drawn then into things like Reiki. Um, I I studied every... (laughs) Every time there was like an ad in the paper for my local area of someone training or teaching any of those modalities, whatever they were called, I went because I I was so curious. I needed to understand what were they doing that was actually helping people heal. Um, And that's, that was really, that's always been in the background for me. And I actually became a teacher of Reiki, a specific type called angelic Reiki for decade and a half almost. And um, it, it you know, but then on the other hand, I was also interested in the, in more of the crude physical. So I was the subtle energetic and the crude physical both drew me in almost like, a, like a living paradox. And I, so I trained in orthomolecular medicine, um, in uh, IV therapy as well, when I was in naturopathic college. Um, and I traveled a lot. I traveled, I talked to the elders, I would talk to you know, the Bushmen and and people who were using plant remedies to heal 
and and they had a lot of the similar types of remedies that we had in North America, just differently named or different potency. And I found all these connections uh, when I was traveling. I, I did study in India twice, more of a focus on Ayurvedic medicine and homeopathy, uh, which are both very popular there. Um, and I drew from that, uh, those experiences, and again, like pulled all that eclectic information into how I approach health. How did you find DMSO along the way? Well, in naturopathic college, it was mentioned only in sports medicine as a pain reliever. And that's as far as the training was on, on dimethyl sulfoxide, um, which it's funny how your mind works. I just dismissed it saying, well, I don't really need to learn about it because I'm not going into pain management as my focus and, uh, or sports medicine for that matter. And that was really for years. I never really thought about it again. Uh, I would, I was actually at a natural health food store and I saw a bottle on the shelf and I thought, oh, this, yeah, I remember, I remember briefly about this. Let me just grab a bottle, bring it home. And who knows, maybe someone will need it who comes into my store. I was more thinking about my clientele and people who were just even walking in off the street, maybe they would be in pain and maybe my, my uh, pain cream, which I call peace cream now, um, wouldn't be enough or something like maybe they needed more intense treatment. So I really just bought it and I put it on my shelf in my store and that was it for a while too. Um, until I had an episode of a, uh, a mite infestation that had taken over my forearms and it was very itchy and, and there was a huge rash and I had tried all the things I normally would for mites, which didn't really take it all the way down. And then I saw that it's like a, like a spotlight went upon the DMSO bottle, like, oh, you know, and I was like, I'm putting that in my arms. I, th I know this is strong and I'm going for it. And I put the, it was a 90% dilution. I just slathered that thing, not even testing it. And I just threw it all over my arms and it burned and it got, everything got red and hot. And I went, Whoa, I didn't expect this level of intensity. And not only that, I could taste it in my mouth. And that feature was just blew me away. I needed to know what the heck this was. So that's when I, I got into deep dive on research and you know, when it's, it's just a natural passion and, it, and it's very divinely inspired and I couldn't get out of it. Like I just was full on focused. I read uh, the first initial 50 studies and I, I was blown away. Um, and then I read a, a book on it uh, by Stanley Jacob. And after that, I did a video. I just expressed myself. I was very excited and I felt like people need to know about this and the sooner the better. Uh, and that was the only, probably the only video that they ever let go viral in my name, <laughs> um, which was great because I felt like mission accomplished. People are going to know about this. This is a really important first aid remedy to have on hand too, right? And and then it went from there, you know, uh, further teachings, the, the publishing company reached out. They wanted someone to write a book about it. Um, I agreed. And uh, the goal was to make like a really handy guide for the layman so that it was, they could understand the science, and, but yet they could also realize, you know, how they can use it appropriately for themselves and their families without being afraid because it's so intense and because it's so responsive, like the body is very responsive to it. And um, the rest is kind of history. It, it, now, back at that time, I was tinkering around with all sorts of formulas because I make a lot of... Um, I make a skincare line and I've designed a bunch of different remedies myself. And I thought, I wonder what would happen if I added some DMSO into my formulations? How would it, how would that synergy work? And because I have a background in chemistry, it was very helpful, you know, to be able to understand acids and bases and different chemical reactions. So I started to do that and I created a whole line of um, DMSO infused body care products that are transdermal. So that means, you know, people can use my dandelion lotion and they're getting liver support by putting it on their skin because the, the herbs and the, 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 um, additions into the cream and the vitamins and minerals and that sort are um, being carried by the DMSO through the skin barrier into the body, into the blood and being used that way. So, 
um, very helpful to, to use the transdermal properties to get things like, you know, get rid of wrinkles for, <laughs> I, I made um, a very well-loved product called Facelift in a Jar um, that really heals back a lot of the skin damage, sun damage, aging, that sort of thing. So um, it was very popular and, and I, I, lo I love that. I love formulating um, medicine and, and the synergy and the blending of what really, because I really want things that are actually going to be effective. You know, I don't need just some moisture. <laughs> I, want, I want action. So, so the DMSO really provided that, which was very exciting. Don't we all? We want more than just, you know, surface level results. Yes, exactly. So does, is DMSO a liquid? Is that how yes. you usually find the product? Uh, yes, it uh, the the chemical composition of it allows it to be in a liquid state um, and its cousin MSM or methyl sulfonyl or DMSO2 as they call it, because it has two oxygens is more crystalline in its natural format. Yes. Okay. And I'm more familiar with its cousin. So why, if someone's learning about DMSO for the first time, what would make them reach out to it for any particular reason for inflammation, for pain management? Um, what would they be suffering with where they would turn to DMSO for healing? Uh, well, you can use it just to fix the blood and increase blood flow in general, because it will relax the vessels and allow for greater passage of blood. Um, so what you're doing when you do that is you accelerate healing. If you can bring blood and nutrients to a particular area, you're upregulating the healing of that particular issue. Uh, also for emergency medicine, it can uh, prevent or stop heart attacks and strokes uh, in the moment that they're happening. Sorry about my blooping there. Um, so it's it's a potent first aid remedy. If you break a bone, uh, it, so it, even in the moment, like as soon as the bleeding has stopped, you can apply DMSO to anything uh, that, like a contusion or um, or a broken anything, and and you're going to get a lot of pain relief and accelerated rapid healing. But the main thing is that it doesn't require the same level of the inflammatory cascade as you would produce because the DMSO is allowing for the, the filtration and the bypass in through the tissues. So opening the tissues and allowing the mediation of bringing in repair tools, removing waste and damage. And the inflammation is usually what, what that that's, that's role, the inflammation's role, right? So your DMSO is now doing that job and therefore you don't have to have as much swelling and redness and pain and, you know, itchiness and all the things that come with an inflamed state, even in the acute um, uh, aspect of that. Uh, and then, you know, just for old scars, um, for, you know, healing anything like really on, on the skin and uh, as well, you know, d d uh, sorry, chronic diseases like cancers and, you know, <laughs> you name the, the imbalance, it's going to assist because Again, it's anti-inflammatory, it's pain relieving, um, it's allowing for the body to um, communicate better, cell communication, this sort of thing. So it's, it's uh, that's why I wrote the book because you can't even really explain it in one, <laughs> like I've struggled to go, where, where's the most? Because most important, right? Because there's so much there. Um, it's one of the, the top studied substances that we've, we've on the earth, really, it's amazing how much it's been studied, and still yet, so few know about it. Absolutely. And that's why we're having this discussion, because I simply wanted to learn more about it. It seems like it's like a pantry staple, you know, a medicine yeah. cabinet staple, something that we all should have in our homes, just like we all have baking soda. And yeah. we need to learn how to use it. Um, and it sounds like it's something like every mom and dad should have as well, because you know, every child is bound to have some sort of fall or, you know, minor injury that maybe this can be more supportive and help, you know, someone feel better faster. Yeah. And, and one of its big um, and more important claims to fame is for concussions. So if you have a child, actually, we just had that case in our telegram group, I think yesterday, where a kid slipped at the pool and hit their head fully on the concrete and DMSO is like the first remedy you want to get in there because it can stop a brain bleed. And that's 
pretty serious because um, that 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 type of hematoma you can die from, especially if it's a subdural um, type. And that uh, having that on hand, rubbing it on right away um, can prevent the whole concussion syndrome aspect from from even occurring. Uh, so that's a big deal for kids, of course, pain in children, um, and you don't need to use a lot as well, um, which is also nice. And it's important to learn different dosages for children um, as well and proper dilutions because it's very strong. So you wouldn't put it, you know, 99.95% on your child. You would add it with water, or aloe vera, and uh, apply it, you know, probably between a 50 and 70% application. Um, or mix it with magnesium. That's one of the products that I designed was a blend of magnesium and DMSO. And that is uh, like a double duty when it comes to tissue recovery and repair, um, as well as the, the associated liver support that you get from actually both products, um, because the magnesium helps your, uh, your liver function with its glutathione levels and its enzyme production. And the DMSO, of course, supports the liver as well through glutathione production and also um, acceleration. So it's, it's, yeah, it's very important for children as well. So it's always topical. You're always putting it on top of your skin. No, not, no, you can ingest it. Um, I just, because it's transdermal, you can get away with not having to drink it. And a lot of people don't like it because it's quite um, bitter and it gives quite a strong odor of the mouth that uh, can turn off your, your partner and your, friends and so forth and your coworkers. So um, people are a little more cautious about its use like that. I've, I've had, you know, kidney cancer patients and other types of um, cancer patients who are ingesting it. Um, generally, it's one teaspoon per five ounces of water or juice um, once or twice a day, depending on, on your goals. Uh, so yes, you can definitely ingest it. Um, but because of the transdermal nature, you might as well get away with a lot of it through the skin. Can you There's also injection. Uh, sorry, I just meant to yeah. say that you that also it can be done by injection. And there are protocols for cancer, uh, but also for concussion, like for football players, for example, who really got hit. Um, the best treatment for them is actually the, the IV approach because it's more immediate. Lost my train of thought for a second. I had a question um, regarding the different ways that you take it. Oh, is it good for parasites? Well, um, so yes, but not the way you think maybe because a lot of people, a lot of people believe that parasites equal bad, right? So from the germ theory, ideology, anything that is microbial or in any of those kingdoms <laughs> is considered bad or dangerous or causing diseases. Um, but they don't actually don't cause diseases. Uh, what they do is they find food. They're just trying to survive like anybody. And when you get them in your body and you have food prepared for them, they stick around and their excretions can cause a histamine responses in people because depending on what they're eating. So say you had, you know, a whole life of ingesting plastic residues that come, you know, in all sorts of foodstuffs, using saran wrap, using tinfoil, using, you know, all these body care products that are full of petrochemicals, food dyes, like xenoestrogen type estrogen mimicker type chemicals, these are sitting in your body. And a lot of the time the body cannot deal with that burden. It packs it away generally in fat cells or in joints and sometimes in the brain. And when you have um, a parasite involved, the first question is not how to get your get rid of them. The first question is why are they here and what are they eating? And how can I cleanse my body of this, uh, this now thank you parasite for highlighting the fact that I have this issue of this particular toxic nature that has to come out and how can I go about that rather than just trying to kill or purge um, the parasite itself. Now there are cases obviously where the individual is so um, laden with a chemical cocktail that they can't even handle 
the the dissolution of those chemicals and they react quite badly and have all kinds of secondary effects to that and it's generally because their um, detox organs are not upregulated so they're recirculating a lot of the wastes so that's where, where where it gets a really bad reputation but if you really understand terrain then truly there's no enemy there um even parasites and so really they're kind of symbiotes in some senses because they're just coming to help you <laughs> get rid of the thing that's really not supposed to be there in the first place. Um, but DMSO will then uh, support the removal of parasites by supporting the upregulation of your detox organs and the proliferation of the support to remove those chemicals from your body, thereby reducing the, the necessity of the parasite for even being there in the first place. Um, and then if you wanted to combine it with something more gentle, not really the intent to kill, but the intent to cleanse and get say bye-bye parasite, we're, thank you, but you know what, we're going to handle it ourselves, but like, thanks for letting us know, off you go and and I will be on top of my cleansing game now, rather than going, you know, it's bad, I got to get rid of it, um, suppress the symptoms, I don't like the symptoms, this sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I find the MSM is actually a little more effective when you have parasites specifically in the gut region or the colon. I find it um, uh, a little more helpful than just the DMSO or using a combination of, the, of both of them. How does someone, you know, with not much background in wellness and healing and natural living, but they're plagued with inflammation or some sort of physical pain and they're ready to get to the root cause. How would you suggest somebody go about doing that or finding someone that can help them get to the root cause? Well, the, I mean, one of the things I've been working on and contemplating is how to um, teach people to be their own doctors and take responsibility for their bodies and learn enough that they feel comfortable and confident with specific, you know, tried and true methods to do so. Um, I do have a lot of videos on that topic that people can watch and, you know, learn different methods of, of cleansing. Uh and there are some difficult ways or some easier ways. And I like to focus on the, the, the methods that seem to work, you know, in a more grand fashion, uh, for example, coffee enemas, or, or there's different types of enemas you can use, but I, I think coffee enemas are one of the quickest ways to cleanse the liver and upregulate its mechanisms and also wash and clean up the blood of anything that's floating around there. Um, and, uh, also I talk a lot about, uh, oran therapy or urine therapy, which is basically free <laughs> and it's your own plasma water, um, that's structured, that's informing the body with about three to 4% of, um, what the body's metabolizing and getting rid of. And when you do that, it actually goes to the limbic system through your, through the taste, through the mouth and tells the, informs the body of what's really going on. Like it helps with cell, cell communication, bodily communication when you do this. So that's something that will automatically begin to cleanse uh, the terrain. Um, and then, you know, the, the nutritional aspect, what, you know, they have to look at that. I mean, really, if they're going to start anywhere, uh, fine tooth comb over what they're eating and why is really a good place to start or the place to start, um, making sure that your water source is pristine and that you're getting enough water. Um, and whatever your physical routine is like exercise or, you know, do you dance? Do you go for walks? Do you chop wood? You know, what are, how are you moving your body and, um, ensuring that the lymphatic system is being manually pumped by movement, um, and sweating, you know, sweating releases a lot of toxins. So, uh, getting sunlight, going out, grounding, you know, so these are basic things, right? Like that it's often overlooked. They just want like a quick fix, but this is the re real way to go about root cause healing is to address all of those aspects of your life, including your stress and stress management, your sleep, um, your circadian rhythm, um, and, you know, some of your, like the aspects of your emotional health, old traumas, throwing those off, on yummy.doctor, that's um, one of my websites, I have a tr uh, tremor or like a release exercise. So you actually um, cause a tremor in your body 
and it physically throws off uh, from the muscle belly, the cortisol that the old stress that was basically sitting in your body and people will shake it off akin to an animal will do the exact same thing. So if they were in a stressful situation and they had to go into fight, flight, freeze or fawn or whatever, then um, after the event and the, 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 the um, calming down of that, they will shake it off. They will literally physically shiver or shake it off. And we've sort of broken that mechanism within us um, perhaps as a child, you were told, don't be scared, you know, um, stop shaking. It's okay. Or this sort of thing. Right. And then we learn to not express, <laughs> um, outwardly afterward. And we just hold it in our bodies. And that can lead to all kinds of diseases, um, including very serious, um, diseases. So if the basics are covered, then you become your own practitioner in that way. Um, and then later you can refine it with remedies and knowledge of different remedies um, and honing your intuition enough to know when you're called to learn about something, because there's so much you could never learn at all in your life. I mean, it's overwhelming the amount of information um, and people do find that they'll say, I'm just overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. And that's why I'm like, well, you start with your lifestyle factors, all of them, you have to assess them. And actually the first course that I've designed is exactly that because my concept is that the one-on-one practitioner, you know, patient relationship really can burn out the practitioner is in this model. And I've experienced that firsthand. And so this isn't right. Like this isn't the way there has to be a better way. And so my thinking is to design the courses in, in such a manner that it walks people through this. So when they come to the end of it, they have the same thing as like the goal of my book, right? They have the confidence to go, yeah, I know, I know how to do this and not mess this up. Or I'm, I know how to go and actually research this so that my, I feel my hunch is, you know, validated or this sort of thing. And, and so the first course is really about assessing your needs, wants, and your whole value system. Uh, and once you get clear about your goals and uh, what you're trying to achieve, it really helps you focus on yourself and and then what comes up for you like yes i really do like working with this substance over that or i feel drawn to homeopathy more than herbal remedies this sort of thing so everyone's going to have their own draw to what they feel works for them and their and their families um so that's really the ultimate goal um because otherwise people just get shut down they just <laughs> they get overwhelmed and they shut down and then nothing happens right um so that's that's the ultimate goal yeah. And supporting people and going with their gut and listening to those hunches and hopefully yes. making it easier for them to find the new information they want to learn about. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you a few questions about a few products that you have on Yum Naturals. What is the vodka skin healing powder that you have? <laughs> That, um, I designed that, sorry, just as my internet's unstable. There we go. Um, I, I actually, it's not my, my own invention or anything like that. Sorry. I'm getting, just give me two seconds. I might have to edit this out. No problem. I don't know how to turn. I, this is a new computer and I don't, I, I realized that on this computer, the notifications blooping isn't. So what's the vodka skin healing powder you have on your site? So there's a doctor called Dr. Robert Kassar. And uh, he's, if, you, if people are interested in parasites, he's, he's the parasite guy. So um, I don't know if he, if he understands the terrain aspect of it or where he stands on viruses and germs as a whole. Um, Cause I haven't watched him in a little while, but you know, back a while ago, I was watching one of his uh, videos, and he was teaching about how to cleanse the skin to the point where the pores are actually open to allow for release and breathing, um, as the skin is supposed to be a two way street. So things you put on it will go in and it's also meant to push out uh, all kinds of wastes. And if it's congested, then it doesn't work like it should. It's actually the biggest organ that we have. And it's also a big elimination organ that's really just sort of glossed over. And so this combination of uh, different powders like baking soda and 
um, diatomaceous earth and this sort of thing. It, it with the vodka as a cleanser and an astringent and a, a tonifier, it will with, combined. Uh, it when you scrub the skin in a circular manner, you're getting all that blocked pore gunk out and off of you. And then you can, once you get out of the shower, you can put your magnesium oil on or any of your other, you know, your fulvic minerals or whatever you're using uh, and go get some sun and you will have some maximum absorption through the skin. And as well, it will breathe. So you'll have better skin um, pore relationship, you know, there. Wow. And uh, it, it really is quite powerful. And the first experiences are usually the most telling. Uh, because you can have such a, um, a change in the way that you feel when you when you've done this. Say it's been like I don't know thirty years, and you've never done a skin cleanse like that, and all of a sudden you you are breathing properly and exp expressing properly, and you feel so good. You know, it just you can tell that it's there's something there. So that was just a design based on his formula. I tweaked a few things based on my knowledge. And that's how that came together. It says it in the product. It refers to his video there on how well, he does it. I'm glad I went with my gut and asked you that question about that product. I'll be ordering it now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of, you have to have a good ventilated area because you're using like a whole bottle of vodka and you pour the whole amount in the vodka and it turns it black because of the activated charcoal. Um, I always have a bottle in my shower with like an old uh, rag that I just crocheted together because it's nice if it has a little bit of um, exfoliation quality to it. And uh, the circulation alone is profound that you get from that. Um, and if you do have, like everyone has sort of mites living on our skin and sometimes the mites that live in our eyelashes, <laughs> like we have mites that are meant to live with us. That's so people can call that a parasite all they want, but yet again, another experience of a parasite that is symbiotic with us that lives in our eyelashes. <laughs> And we all have them. And if you saw them, you might be horrified, but um, they can uh, get out of hand sometimes. They can crawl up and get in the eyebrows. They can get into, um, if you had like scars and stuff, it can like agitate and get into the hair. Uh, and sometimes when it gets into the hair, it can cause hair loss. Uh, so you can even pour the mixture over the hair and sort of scrub it into the scalp. And if there are any of those mites or parasites or whatever living there, they'll go, you'll take care of them in that instance. Um, or, or anything that you've picked up from the garden, you know, uh, or if you're, if you've come back from vacation and there's some new critters that hopped a ride, like this is another way to cleanse a body of the, the little skin mites that, or dust mites and things like that, that can get on, on you and embed it in the, the upper layers of skin. How many times a year do you recommend somebody do, does this scrub? Yeah. Like, like I said, I have it in my shower and I do it every so often, but I'm more experienced with it. So I only do it, you know, with my intuition. So, um, if you're just starting to use it, I would do it probably every day after, like every time you shower, just do a, do a scrub down of it, let it sit on the skin for a few minutes, maybe while you're, you know, doing your hair or something. And, um, I'd probably do that for a couple of weeks, you know, and, and then just take a break come at it again when you feel you want to do another cleanup. Um, so it's really more, you get, you're supposed to get more intuitive, I think, with these things. Like, oh, I haven't done, you know, this in a month. It's time to do another, maybe during the full moon when things are more active, you know, you could do something like that in your shower. Um, but at the beginning, you usually want to give it a good go. Um, okay. You know, every time you shower kind of thing. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to get started with that. Um, mm -hmm. it definitely, it jumped out at me when I was visiting your website the other day. So sounds like it's time. Yeah. It's a good cleanser. Cause that's really what restores our health is cleansing. That's really the only thing, you know, other than putting in the nutrition and putting in the, like having the inputs available, really, if you want to, um, if you're not in perfect health, the focus should be on how should I cleanse myself properly? because that will restore the body to homeostasis, um, that, and obviously your nutrition, um, input. Any place people should look on your websites if they want to learn more about different types of cleansing that they can do? Uh, well, you know, there's a lot of, uh, additional information on the yummy.doctor site. So that's more like the teaching 
uh, aspect, the blog articles. And so my, a lot of my Substack articles will be um, moved there too. So they, they get duplicated as well and videos and, um, and then the courses I'll have as well that are more teaching, but uh, you know, the, the products themselves will have the descriptions and some information obviously for each of the, the goals of whatever that is. Um, so it should be, should be more self-explanatory for like an individual item. Is there anything that you're really into right now in the health and wellness and spiritual space? Uh, yeah, there's always something I'm really into. <laughs> uh, right now I'm really into, uh, come full circle with frequency healing. Uh, I really like to, um, experience things like terahertz frequencies. I've been uh, I got a new device that I've been working with. Um, it's a Prife Itericare wand. Um, and you do have to get them through like proper distributors um, that I've become one. And I didn't mean to, it's just because it was so effective that I couldn't believe it. And I, and just like the DMSO story, I just started talking about it and people wanted to get it. So then we had to set that up uh, to order them properly. But that, I'm on that thing every day. It is, um, uh, it's really going hand in hand with my other research and other uh, interests, which is the easy water or the fourth phase of water or this, or how to uh, structure water in a hexagonal fashion. And also studying, you know, Gerald Pollack's work and Beta Austin's work of water memory and water consciousness and, uh, you know, what, what the, what is that? And, and how can we learn about this world and ourselves by studying an uh, element like that? And, um, and it applies back because the wand uh, assists the body to, uh, it, it, to have battery power. So basically when the water is structured in its hexagonal fashion, it acts like a, like a movable gel, like uh, substance, and it will communicate the electrical aspects through the body, um, you know, almost instantaneously when the easy zone and the bulk water are not properly, uh, membraned next to each other, you have like a dead or dying cell, or you have a low energy situation where the cell is not optimized. And so this type of a device is structuring the water, helping the water to structure in that manner. And also thus putting in the frequencies that help to recharge the mitochondria so that the vitality of, of the organism comes back, you know, so it he heals everything because really you're just charging your battery back. <laughs> and uh, so all the things that are happening in your body can, you know, upregulate and, and get the job done. And I've been doing comp experiments com combining like magnesium, combining DMSO with the frequency wand and um, different kinds of protocols that work. Uh, with certain nutrients. And uh, so that's been pretty fun to play around with right now. <laughs> that and and just, you know, really fascinated about, um, I'm really contemplating different modes of what we think contagion is, or what what is really in our world. And, you know, there's like two thoughts, really. One is uh, nothing can touch us because nothing is really a, a pathogen. Uh, like I was explaining with the parasites, it's really um, every, if you look at everything that it's trying to show you or help you or guide you rather than your enemy, it really changes the way you see your world and it changes the way you approach uh, your healing. Um, and then, you know, you also have um, the idea, the, the, the other flip idea that it's actually, there's no difference. There's no difference between the inner and the outer as much as we thought, because we've learned that our microbial um, uh, exploration inside of our body and on our body and in every orifice, um, they communicate. So, so our microbes communicate with other microbes outside the body. So can you imagine what's going on there? <laughs> like all this talk that we're not aware of between our microbes signaling all over the place. Um, I would probably be overwhelmed if we could see it. And so what is then, if that's the case, then there's really no difference with, you know, what's happening on the outside to the inside in some senses, meaning that the outside will, could trigger something on the inside, right. From just saying, oh yeah, we we're, you guys aren't healthy. Like say the microbes on the outside, say to the microbes on the inside, you know, they signal, this is the information 
and you don't have the information, why? What's wrong with you? And it goes, oh, oh, okay, thank you for that information. We're going to upregulate and fix ourselves. And in that process, it creates symptoms because symptoms are uh, evidence of healing, a healing response, right? It's not a problem to have symptoms. It's an actual expression, which is the body, which is intelligent and wise, uh, can, making a correction. So if you think about bacteria completely differently or microbes, because really bacteria are pleomorphic, they can become fungus, they can become other things, uh, then it takes the whole fear factor kind of out of the picture. And it helps you prepare, like say we're going traveling and those microbes, you know, out in Spain speak Spanish. And, <laughs> and so there's going to have, you know, maybe new information or different information than where you've been living, where they've already been talking for years. And that might change and upregulate you. And now you're traveling and you got sick because your body's like, oh, well, we have to adapt to this region and you don't have the stuff to adapt. So you better purge this and get rid of that and get, fix this. And rather than suck it down and try to suppress it and try to kill everything, right? So it really turns around the way that we're looking at things and helps us get closer and closer to truth by, you know, tossing away the the false ideas, the, the things that just don't really hold water um, when you look at it very closely and really uh, contemplate the meaning of <laughs> when people say these things, what they're really getting at and like go down into the uh, methodology of the studies and that sort of level, right? Then you realize what hogwash most of it actually is. <laughs> and that is, it's like some of these, some of these projects, I wonder if it's just make work projects, just, just, because we're bored or something, because a lot of it is just such a waste of time and, and almost meaningless because most of it's just um, a fluff or our or imagination. And because we can always find something to validate our information, then we can uh, see that's why that's why I had to turn off notification. <laughs> oh, I know it. Now I'm just like hoping nobody calls me on Viber because I don't think I have that one switched off. <laughs> you know, just, when call you, me. just when you think you're unreachable, there's always a spammer all... that's available to find you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh gosh. And it's almost full moon, by the way. I think it's it's peaking like tonight, maybe full moon in Leo. So it is a good time to address, you know, your if you if you feel more fidgety or agitated under a full moon, generally the parasites are a lot more active uh, during that time. So it'll be a strong tell whether you have a lot of wastes that you really need to deal with. Um, and it could even be emotional toxicity too, really. Yeah. It, um, I actually, I experienced a whole family of people uh, that they had ridiculous amounts of parasite. I've never seen it like in the eyes, swimming in the eyes, coming out of the body, coming out of the ears, uh, rashes all over the skin, coming out in the stool or talking like flukes, all kinds of things happening. And they did all the killing protocols and they got worse by what they were doing, which tells me, you know, getting trying to get rid of the parasites wasn't solving their problem. The parasites were stubborn and uh, because whatever it was happening in them, in their experiences, they were there to feed on it. And perhaps it was also electrical feed or emotional feed. Like there's such, there's so many paths we can really explore and do studies on when we, when we think this way, because if we think we know, then we're not going anywhere. Right. Because, oh, we already know this causes that this causes that boom, done. And it's just not so it's actually most of that is not true at all. And now we have a whole new paradigm come before us that we have to learn, relearn, unlearn all kinds of information and, tr you know, trudge forward into like pioneering thinking uh, and, and understand what is really happening. Like how could we correct that? Because they couldn't correct that. It was uh, almost impossible. And, and uh, the real cause could have been the the stress in their lives, you know, causing all kinds of inflammation in the body and tissue damage. And some of those toxins could have just been there, maybe causing more harm, but the parasites were eating them, right? So these this sort of thing, but uh, it's really fascinating. I find I find we're just opening now to 
like real truth and knowledge and and science and 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 things that we need to study. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do. Sounds like. Yeah, and I feel like the real healing modalities are just going to start coming to the forefront. It's actually really exciting, and that's why I like having these conversations because I think there's so much more out there that so many of us are unaware of. And so let's start exploring them and find out about them. And then if it resonates, you know, just like the, the vodka scrub rug, rug, rem, resonates with me, you know, go off and explore it and try it, like follow that instinct. And I think that will lead everyone down a better path. Yeah, I agree. Totally. Well, can you leave our listeners with maybe one healthy tip they can consider adding into their lives after listening to this conversation? Well, <clears throat> <laughs> it's uh, oftentimes people are stuck in sort of materialism and um and they want to um get something they want to to have something or bring something in when they're not well they want to find a solution like a material something out there that, that if they had it then you know they'd be okay and there are those things i mean i just mentioned that, that one the terahertz one that's going to bring relief okay great but what is your real um, energetic footprint right now in your life, you know, meaning if you walk into your house, do you have, do you feel comfortable? Like, do you feel like your space is congested, you know, full of stuff and chaos and, you know, this sort of energy, because I found that if you really work with organizing principles and, um, clean up your space and move out of like the poverty consciousness th thinking, which I've done a few videos on that or the, um, the hoarder mentality or the scarcity mentality, which they've, they've really done a good job to, to, um, with the propaganda to make us feel like that. Right. Cause when you want to sell an idea, you in marketing, you make it rare or scarce, right? Like where people have to act fast yeah. and we have to undo a lot of that programming um, especially when it comes to things like what they're doing now, which is trying to push this climate change ideology down everyone's throats when it's completely false, like hundred percent false, proven false long ago. It's totally just an agenda backed by lies and the same, you know, tobacco science that they did with this latest virus scandal. So the, the, the idea is now energetically if you want to have abundance and not get into this constricting fear place, right? Because fear is the worst. Like, I think it's what takes us down the most as far as our health, mental health and physical health and constricts our freedom. Like, it's like with fear, we put the chains on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so when, when we want to approach it, we want to release. We want to think of it as what can we release and let go to allow for the things we want to come in more effortlessly. So I often will do a lot of purges, not only of my body, but of my space. Like, do we really need that here? Is it, is it, is there a purpose for me having this item, you know, or whom would benefit from this item? You know, I'm always got this in my mind and not to be also wasteful. Like I'd rather have my daughter's clothes go to someone ne next that can use them and, and have value for, for those. But if you, if you think like that and you have that hoarder type of mentality, then it's something to really reflect upon and look at and see, you know, maybe pick a room in your house one day and just decide you're going to clear it out and you're going to refresh the paint or something and just, you know, put it back in, in a lovely way. Cause I see a lot of people struggling, um, who financially struggling, and one of the tricks is to actually let go of things <laughs> to open energetically and allow for the things you need to come in and that keep that flow going. Right. So, uh, you know, that's one thing that a lot of practitioners might not address, you know, um, some of those determinants of health, the lifestyle factors or the way in which you approach your healing is the same way you're approaching the way you organize your house or your life. Right. And so if you can, do something small like that and apply it now to the way you think about you. It's a really interesting exercise that I think people would benefit from um, just to release the fear. And even when you let it go, you know, wish, like, thank, thank the, you know, be grateful that you had it and like practice those sorts of 
um, really good mental habits of, um, you know, love and gratitude and appreciation and generosity and this sort of thing so that you can open up that those corridors in your life and then things start to flow better. So it's the same as the external as the internal with your own body, you want things to flow better, that's health and proper homeostasis and regulation. And so if you work with the outside to get that imprinted in your mind, it can really go a long way when you begin to really approach a lot of your health concerns. Um, so I really think of it as like a holism in that way, like your life reflects you and it's trying to mirror back to you some information about that, about your well-being. So you can shift it either way, right? You can go from inside, go from outside and you can get results, you know, as above, so below in that regard. So anyway, I thought that would be a, a really helpful um, reflection for people to consider because we really are, we were born abundant and meant to, meant to experience this place in its abundance. Um, but in order to receive it, you have to have an empty vessel. <laughs> and if it's already full, then there's not much that can come your way. I like that a lot. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Well, it was such a pleasure having you on the show. I took a whole page of notes. I'm going to be listening to this episode again when it airs, just because I just learned so much from you. So thank you so much for your time. It was so nice to connect. And where can people go to keep learning about you and your products and what you do? Uh, I would say register at yummy.doctor, Dr. D-O-C-T-O-R. That's the domain name. You don't need to add anything else. And uh, when the courses are available in our membership, we're going to have our own social media um, backdrop as well. So you can have your own page and you can message other members and there's groups and things that we're going to form so that we can communicate. Um, there's going to be topic groups for the courses as well. So if you took a specific course, you can join other members who have also taken that course and talk about things and find out what worked and what didn't or, you know, other ideas you know, just really forming a community. And that's what I really want, have been wanting to do forever. Uh, so this is sort of the way, so that would be the, the, the best place to find all the offshoot links to everywhere else. Like if you click on even one video on that website below the video has all my other websites and contacts and um, telegram channels, Facebook, et cetera, it's all there. So people can choose where they want to, uh, you know, communicate. Um, Telegram's the, the main communication chat that we have right now. Perfect. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Um, and then if anybody who's listening is curious about um, the product that I asked you about, the vodka skin healing powder, they can go to um, to your yummy website and I'll have- Yeah, to Yum link. Naturals. Yeah, mm -hmm. to, to yumnaturals.store and I'll have those links in the show notes. So anyone that's listening, you can get that link there or you can get that link on my Starseed Kitchen website under- this particular show on the site. So we should make it easy for you guys to shop and find what you need. Well, thank you again so much for being on the show and please come back on anytime you want to chat or if you want to discuss the launch of your programs, there's so much that all of us can learn from. So thank you. Thank you, Annie. Thanks again.